Hey, I'm so glad you're here. So we got a division one soccer speed and strength training workout here for you guys today, okay? So obviously we started with speed and we finished with strength, but let's walk you through the warm up real quick so you know what's going on in the workout so you can do it for yourself. So go ahead, subscribe if you already haven't done so yet and make sure you hit that like button for me because it helps us tremendously and I appreciate you. So getting started with Foe's workout. So again, she's a, she's a back in the soccer pitch. So the soccer speed and agility workout is more focused on the agility and the lateral side of change direction as well as there's a lot of heavy emphasis of some ACL type of prevention stuff. So starting off with the warm up, we started with a lot of glute type of activation drills, lateral band walks, uh, obviously open up the hips. And then we started off our plyometric series. So to get the agility going is with our resisted plate hops. Okay. So we started slow, just jumping back, absorbing that force, and then worked into producing force. So starting slow, going to fast. All right. So just increasing the speed, ramping up for our warm up. So that's the main part of our, our warm up for the speed and agility part. So now going to the actual agility. We did shuffles into a sprint breakdown decelerate. So getting under control, which again is great for ACL because that's when typically when that happens on non-contact injuries, right? Is when people are decelerating, unfortunately. Uh, teach you how to have breaks very well. So we did shuffle to sprint breakdown. Then we did some transition stuff where we shuffle, open up, sprint, sprint back. So we get more of the pure speed aspect of number one, transitioning because we're a little bit more sport specific or a little bit more uh, peaking towards her season, the end of her workouts. So we wanted to be able to transition instead of just starting statically so we wanted to train that ability to transition from moving to actual sprinting just like you have to do in a soccer field because you very rarely start from a static position when you're playing soccer so that's how you just make it a little bit more specific finish with some lateral cone jumps so again for quickness and power side to side and then hopping into the weight room now now for her soccer strength part of the workout we started off with some power so we did the jam or press just full body power paired that with some single leg glute bridges to again attack the glutes and the posterior chain for again ACL type of stuff and can controlling that leg while you're on the pitch. Second part is we went into trap bar deadlifts for lower body strength, paired that with tra uh, dumbbell bench press for some upper body, cause again, we only come two times a week. So we gotta hit everything, all right? And lastly, we finished off with one of my favorites uh, for athletes is again, is that overspeed lunge. So the band pulls you into the lunge, so you have to stop all that extra force, all right? So great for decelerating, great for control. Uh, paired that with some TRX rows for some upper back, which again, a lot of athletes lack. And finish off with some glute hamstring iso work to again, focus on that posterior chain, attack that a little bit more, the glutes and hamstrings in that length posi position, which again, complements the overspeed lunges super well. So that goes with what goes into the soccer program. So again, hit that like, subscribe to our channel, appreciate you being here and check out the video. Yeah, we're still sideline windmills. So slow, smooth, lay that shoulder back, like try to separate the hips and the upper body. And we'll go like five reps on one side, five on the other. Put your hands out in front towards that wall. And then now uh, we're going reach and roll. Reach that top hand, reach to that wall. So you roll that rib cage forward like that. There you go now. So just make a big circle over the top of your head. Yep. And eyes follow your fingertips. Eyes follow those fingers. And just lay back. Feels good, yeah? And then fold back over top and repeat. Relax, exhale, open everything up. The side plank, because I want your feet staggered. I mean, like staggered. Oh, Perfect, so hips up, we'll go 30 seconds. And again, as long as you're feeling that oblique down here, obviously you can even crunch forward a little bit and then just drive those hips up away from the floor. There you go, feel the abs kind of working down there. So why do we do our feet staggered as opposed to just stacked? So one, it kind of shifts your weight a little bit forward. Two, it splits your your hips, so one's extension, one's in flexion. So this one's forward, this one's backward basically. So it kind of allows you to not compensate by using your lower back essentially. So that way you just get a little bit more ab work, it's a little bit more direct, because versus if both hips are in extension, it's easier to yeah, use your lower back a little bit more. 30 seconds, good, switch sides, same thing other side. All right, so hips up. We'll do your kind of Spider-Man stationary, you know, big step, elbow. We won't do the rotation since we did that one earlier. So just five each side. And then after that, we do groiners, which is both feet at the same time. So basically just popping up, use your elbows to open up those hips, get your butt down, right? Just doing both at the same time. Right towards the pinky, good. Back leg is straight, good. Pushing those hips to the floor. That's it, just stretching those hips, that's all. And then switch legs. Hips towards the floor, chest is up big and proud. Knees open. All right, now we'll do some glute activation. Band inside the ankle. Go 20 steps on one side, one foot out, one foot in. And again, just step and come back, okay? Like try to step to my foot, basically. Ooh. 
All right, hey, last one. We're gonna do, keep it on that band. We're gonna do the groin now. So keep it that leg, face this way, and obviously with your back leg. So yeah, so get out a little bit further and think about like you're gonna squeeze your feet together because obviously we've got some agility, some change of direction today for speed. So a huge part of your hamstrings that a lot of people strain is your adductors, right? So which is actually your groin muscles type of thing. The big thing that we forgot, we always focus on the glutes, but we always forget what's on the inside, right? And that's where a lot of strains happen, especially for change of direction or sports where you have to separate like hockey or soccer, stuff like that. And try to keep that foot almost off the floor, just so that way it has to keep it working, right? You can slide the band up higher if you need to, like on your shin. Since the band is lower on your shin angle down here, that puts a lot of stress in your knee joint because it's a longer axis. So if that, if you feel pain in your knee when you're doing those, take the band, slide it up towards the knee, so that way axis is a lot shorter and doesn't put strain on your MCL or your meniscus or uh, anything on the inside of the knee. Let's do some single switches, nose, knees, toes over the plate, and then just single switches on me, right? Switch, weights always on the plate. All right, so just fast on that switch, staying level. All right, just low and fast, switch. There you go, now still load here, good, switch. Facing the other way, same thing. This time, don't pop up as much, right? It's like you stay the same height, but you have to pick your legs up, your suspension up, versus lifting our whole body up. That makes sense? So you're just gonna be here, and it's like you just move your feet so fast to like catch yourself from dropping. Load that leg, there you go, switch. This time I want you to be a little bit wider, right? The lower base of support, and it'll be, it should be lower a little bit easier. So be, don't be too narrow, right? If we're narrow, we get it pulled off balance. Wide and stable, right? So I want to see some good range. We're just gonna go rotational overhead slam, so come over here. Just go five each side, but maximum power. Five to the right, five to the left. Try to smash the ball. Get up, overhead, just big smash, right? Just 10 total. And let those toes pivot too, right? Don't let, don't let your be, feet be glued to the ground, right? Let your toes like rotate. All right, so this is our speed prep work, all right? So stuff that's gonna be specific to actually moving in a second. So here we're just working on position mechanics and also get him to produce some power. So that way when we get to shuffle or some agility stuff. Same exact thing, but now we're gonna do that quick and back where we came from, all right? So quick and stick back where we're only pausing when we're back here. But still, I wanna see that, you know, better base this round. Okay, even start with a better base. That's too narrow. There you go. There you go. Load that leg. All right, that's better. All right, ready? Good, get those hips moving even further that way. Go. That was better. Go. Now you see that difference. Go. There we go, relax. Now we're just gonna go full speed continuous. I'm gonna time you for 10, 12 seconds and we're gonna see how many switches we can get in that time frame. Well, every time we switch, we'll count as one. So an example, right, you're here. It's gonna be one, two, three, four. There you go, come on, quick, quick, push. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna go shuffles. So first round we'll go shuffles, just two reps. So meaning, I just want you to start on the one cone, hand inside, when you get to that side, always touch with the inside arm. So that cone left, this cone right, if we're facing this way. We're gonna do shuffles, but turn in sprints. Okay, so we're gonna do shuffles there, right? But plant, sprint, decel, just work on the mechanics of that, going full speed. And then we'll get into a more of a complete reaction drills. It's just get here, and then just go, go, go back again if you want to, right? Just just playing with it, right? Being an athlete. Make, trying to be efficient on that turn, essentially. Do some figure eights. We'll go forwards and backwards. Going there, we'll go forward sprints, okay? Just crossing through. When we come back, we'll do like an angled run. So kind of like, almost like when you're marking somebody, like you have to a lot in soccer. So coming here, I'm gonna come through, but I'll still keep my eyes down here, or like if someone was in front of me, like in the dome, right? And then I'm gonna repeat, right? And then like, almost like if I'm running with someone, and then break. And then like, say someone's coming by me, same type of idea. Like you're just marking them as they're, you're chasing the ball. All of a sudden it got back this way. There you go, it's perfect. Yep, so you're going, you gotta mark me type of thing, right? Yep. Yeah. And then, yep, stay with me. Oh, no. You're good. It's like you're chasing the ball, and then you gotta, there you go. 
Yep. Good. And then run, but eyes up right here. They shuffle, right? And then we'll do a crossover run and then just simply burst back through the blue. So shuffle, crossover run, and then just break regular full sp sprint through the blue cone. Back, we'll do the turn and run. These ones are still like, you're like marking someone in front of you, right? So we're not gonna, yeah, we're not gonna turn and go. So it's like that sideways run. So it's kind of like that in between when you're like here, like this, right? So we're shuffling and now we're running with somebody and then we got to plant and go. Shuffle and yeah, run with them and then break. Good. Did a really good job of like stopping all your momentum with the back foot and then just driving, that's good. We're gonna go 10 seconds, yeah. two feet over the cone, left or right. Uh, we're going on the surface, a little bit softer surface, right? So it's not as much stressful. So again, we're gonna go four rounds. Again, just make sure you get the feet over the hurdle. Focus on getting side to side, right? Not just up, not vertically, but more laterally because it's more change of direction type of day. All right, so we go 10 seconds, as many as we can. All right, so we're gonna do a push press. So this is focused on power. You can go wider or narrow, whatever one feels good for you, okay? It's just a quick dip with the legs, right? Into a semi-squat, not a full squat. So just rapidly come down, and like you're gonna jam it, or like you're gonna throw this thing all the way over, okay? So we're gonna go a set of five, right? Just quick dip, punch, dip, punch, okay? Power, you should make it shake like that. No, it's mainly legs. Full body, 90% legs, 10% arms. There you go, good. And screw your feet back a little bit so you're like leaning into it. There you go. Just dip and drive. Go, power. There you go, one. So I love the Viking press. It's like a, it's like an Olympic lift almost, right? Getting the full body power. It's simple to, to teach, right? They can just get in and just think about throwing it. Not worrying about like catching a bar or anything else. So good for power, especially horizontal for acceleration. And then some single leg glute work in between as a filler to set us up for our main primary lift, okay? So that's kind of like the tier one for some power and some accessory work. So pick the other leg off the ground. Yeah, single leg. So do eight on the one leg. Yep, just push your hip towards my hand. There you go, squeeze that right booty. There you go. We're gonna pair this with dumbbell bench presses. Okay. 